Hi, the Blues and the D's are playing at the MCG on Saturday night. How exciting. I, we, we've had an interesting week this week. We have ha- come off you know, another disappointing loss or another disappointing effort. Um, but for the, you know, the fourth quarter against the Lions, I'm not sure how much any of you take out of that. Uh, but a disappointing finish, followed by the two-week suspension of the captain, Patrick Cripps. We sat here on Tuesday night and we watched the tribunal hearing for two hours here on the channel. And we basically got the outcome that we probably all knew that we were going to get. And the reality is, you know, uh, the outcome has a lot more weight on it than what it ever has in the history of the league. So we know that all of a sudden the situation becomes a lot more tougher than what it was beforehand. Uh, We know that we're going to be missing three of our top liners in the midfield and really the three best contested midfielders that we have in the side in George Hewitt, Paddy Cripps and Matt Kennedy. And so all of a sudden there's the doomsday scenario and you know there's a lot of emotion that spilt out I thought over you know the result last week and really over the last fortnight because over the last two games you know there's been a clear drop in intensity in energy in that spark and it's so difficult again I always reference being on this side being the the spectator and the fan because we don't really know what goes on on the inside there are so many variables that make up an organization let alone a sporting club you know there are human beings that are actually running these organizations and every human being has their flaw when you have a list of 40 plus and you have all the administration and you have everyone there are so many different elements to getting it right consistently and you know i think a little bit of credit should go to the club because they've been really consistent for the majority of the year but the last two weeks have just been disappointing and there's just no better way to get over it than to move on and actually get over it and and start performing again and, and bringing that intensity and bringing that heat on saturday night and This is an interesting situation because, you know, there's there's a team that we're playing this week who are the reigning premiers. This is a team that even with our strongest side, I think most, if not all of us, still probably predicted this to be a loss at the start of the year when we all did our season predictions. I know that I did, but that doesn't mean just because we predicted it that, you know, the miraculous can't happen. You know, for me... What I'm looking at in this match, I'm trying my best not to get caught up in the fear of missing finals because the season hasn't finished yet. We've won 12 games. It's in our hands. We're not in a situation that we have been last year and the year before where we were just hoping that certain teams would lose and and that would get us in. In this case, we have it in our hands. We are there. We are right there from taking that next step. And I know that for... Maybe some people taking that next step was 11 or 12 wins. I know for me, 12 wins was my prediction and my hope for the season. So in that sense, I'm satisfied with that happening. However, I'm really big on this is a journey to winning a premiership. That's what it's all about. This whole thing, this channel, to be honest with you, is a documentation of when the Carlton Football Club wins its next premiership. That's what it is all about. And I'm just really... Obviously, I'm wanting finals football. That's what we support for. That's what we barrack for. We want finals football because we know how important it is to get that experience into the group. So I'm approaching these two weeks as, I mean, they are an opportunity. This is what we want. This is what we wanted literally years ago. 2020, when we thought we should be playing finals. 2021, when we thought we should be playing finals. We wanted to get to this point in the year and be in the situation that we are right now. I mean, yeah, look, top four would be nice, but I don't think... And I don't think at any point we were really a top four side. Maybe at certain patches of the season it looked nice, but I don't think top four was really the aim. It was really get into finals, play finals football, and and see what happens and go from there. And throughout the season, our best has been good enough, I believe, to play finals football. I still believe that. And it really all starts with the mindset this week. That's, That's really... I'm not even looking for anything else other than how we approach the game mentally because it's very easy to go into this game, I believe, with the mentality of, well, we've already lost the game before before the ball's bounced. You know, our Gorn, Petrarca, Oliver, Viney versus Walsh, Chera, Dow, and et cetera, and Pito, TDK, whatever. It's very easy, but okay, maybe we are coming up against a more dominant midfield, 
And that was probably still the case, even if we had Cripps, Kennedy and Hewitt. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't control the way we attack them defensively, the way we tackle them, the way we hunt them. And in many respects, that might play into our hands, given we're not expected to win this game um, from the outside world. Um, but the boys have done a pretty good job of not tuning into the external or, or so it seems. There was a little bit of commentary this week from Harry Mackay on the couch and Sam Walsh and um, you know, there was a, a real split in the reaction to some of the comments. Um, there was a, a thought that some complacency had crept in. Uh, I think upon watching the full interview, which I don't think many did upon watching the full interview, he's right. It's been a good year. Has been. Has been an enjoyable year. It's been the most enjoyable year of my time as a Carlton fan, except for maybe 2011. 2022 has genuinely been the most enjoyable year of my Carlton supporting career. <laughs> it's great. However, I'm still not satisfied and I don't think that they're satisfied. I don't, I mean, I hope they're not satisfied and they get two cracks at locking in a final spot no matter what. You win one of the next two, you're in and that's what it is. Now, you know, want to go in with the mentality of winning both for sure, but the the minimum that's required is to win two, one of the two. And that is if you don't want to talk about what would happen if we lose both and the doggies win one and lose one, etc. But yeah, look, this for me is a perfect opportunity to really see what is this system that we've been creating all year. We've had a preseason with a whole new coaching group. We've been spoken to in the context of, you know, being a little patient, knowing that it's going to get better as the season rolls on. The reality from the results is that, you know, the second half of the year has not been as good as the first half of the year. And I'm you know, just hoping that they don't let themselves down in this final stretch, in this final part of the year. You know, after what has been done, all the hard work that has been done up until this point to just throw it all away. I think that's where the fear starts creeping in. But until it's actually been thrown away, it hasn't been thrown away. So I don't want to talk as if the season's over. You know, the, the irony in saying the season's over, we're going to lose the next two, the you know, finals is dead. The irony in a supporter saying that and then expecting the team to never give up is not lost on me whatsoever. It's actually fascinating. The irony in the supporter, a supporter losing their shit under the, the fear of missing out of finals, but expecting the boys to keep their cool under the fear of losing a game and getting to this real tight end of the season is not lost on me. So let's just remember that, um, you know, it's just a massive game. It's a massive opportunity. We're back at the MCG after, you know, two weeks away. I expect there to be a pretty solid crowd. And if you've thrown in the towel already, well, that's your prerogative. But, you know, we've potentially got two more games left for the, for the year. Hopefully there's more. But uh, I'm living right in the moment. I'm taking literally every moment as it comes because that's all you can. That's all you can do. You know, I do get emotional and I get do, I do get worked up, especially over the last two weeks. But um, I think it's important to to stick the course and let let the result play out. The result of the season. Those who want to draw conclusions, go for it. That's how you support. We love you anyway. Um, but this is just such an exciting time for us to be playing in relevant games. No more dead rubbers. You know, it's round 22 and we're not playing in a dead rubber. You know, this time last year and the year before, guys had gone off for surgery and um, I think that mustn't be forgotten. So there's that. Now, from our point of view, from the injury front, you know, we spoke about Cripps is going to be out. That's not an injury. That's just um, obviously a suspension. Jack Martin is going to be available to play. Oh, thank goodness we need him to play. I was a little worried about last week. I thought it was a, another recurring, you know, tear. And I just thought, okay, here we go again. He's going to miss. But lo and behold, he's played three quarters. Maybe that's a good sign. Get him into four quarters this week. He's definitely going to need to pick up the slack. We need him to provide us with something this week. He really needs to help lead the charge this week. Um, Honey's going to be available next week. Stocker is available this week. You know, part of me really wants to see Stock in the side. I really do. But I don't think it's going to happen unless one of these halfback flankers moves up into the midfield potentially and you bring Stocker in to play on a Bailey Fritch. I'm not sure. Um, we know George Hewitt is out for the remainder of the home and away season. 
Uh, we know Dave Cunningham is back into running. I'm not sure if that even provides us with any hope that he's going to play. And we know that Zach Williams is still not going to be available, but he will be available next week. So in terms of this week, the big question is, obviously with Cripps out, with Hewitt already out, and with Kennedy already out from last week, what do we do? You know, is it Paddy Dow, Will Setterfield, and somebody else? My mind goes straight to Jack Silvani. That's just my view I'd love to know what you think we do with this midfield mix, but I guess we have an opportunity to you know, forcibly be creative. We have to be creative with it. And in that could be some unpredictability. Um, you know, We're coming up against arguably the greatest midfield on paper in the competition. That's, you know, they're, they're, they're fantastic. Petrarca, Oliver and Viney with Gorn or Jackson in the ruck, they're fantastic. But that will not and cannot take away from our ability to hunt them. Just because they're stars does not mean you can't hunt them. If anything, they're expected to beat you. So the pressure's on them to get it done. And that's the mentality I want us to go in with. I, would, I want us to go in with this mentality of no fear. I want us to play with some dare. And I want us to play with an intensity that we have not seen all year. That's what I want to see from the, from the group this week. Um, and that's what it is. I'm excited to be back at the football. You know, th- you know, such is life. Football was taken away for so many years. It's very easy to get complacent in what you have right now, and be, and you know, and forget about what you didn't have, and forget about the times when it was gone. But it's here right now. I'm going to continue to enjoy this season. And you know, if we miss out on finals, we'll talk about it when it happens. I don't want to talk about it right now when we've got a fucking massive game against the D's on Saturday night. Um, you know, the captain's out, got to get him to play final. Just want to see Cripps in the final. Um, but I don't think you can play for one man. I don't think you can use that as motivation because if you're playing for one man, I don't think that's the right mentality. You got to do it. You got to want to do it for yourself. Um, the spotlight for me from our end, Harry Mackay, Jacob Wiedering, Charlie Kerno, Sam Doherty, Sam Walsh. These are the guys I look to, to lead it. It's going to take a team effort, but I want, I'm, I'm going to be looking heavily at those guys because they are the club. The, the, the keys are there with with a lot of them. They are the leaders of the club right now. And they're going to be there for many years. We've got many, many years of watching this group play. So it's not the be-all and end-all in this moment right now. But really, you know, they can really stamp their authority in their careers and, and turn that page and, you know... It's going to be rocking at the MCG if we can find a way to get up. You know, I'm hopeful more than what I am confident. Um, I'm not living in la-la land. I know we're up against it, but I do want to see them. I do want to see them push push the Ds to the brink. They're not unbeatable. They've shown cracks all season. Every Melbourne supporter I speak to these days has already written them off. Um, you know, but the respect is there. They are the premiers and, you know, they're a great side. So... What about you? What do you think? How are you feeling going into this game? How are you feeling going into the next two weeks? I can already smell and feel and hear the rhetoric um, around. It's all about next week against the Pies, but we have to deal with that next week. Um, the opportunity to, to tune ourselves up and get better and get back on track starts on Saturday night. And that's what it's all about for me. So yeah, but for you, what is it? How are you feeling? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you on Saturday night and go the Mighty Blues. Hey!